a presentarles al a ponente que a, va a hacer la conferencia inaugural de, de este curso. Marie Dublé eh, bueno, es, el, eh, es el director adjunto del Departamento Financiero de la Asamblea Nacional eh, Francesa. Uh, ha sido el jefe del Departamento Jurídico del Consejo Constitucional francés. Uh, ha sido también profesor en la mítica Escuela Nacional de Administración uh, francesa. Uh, y es uno de los, uh, tiene una gran pasión que es precisamente el, el, el conocimiento de, de los problemas de la financiación de los partidos y también eh, de la celebración de las elecciones. Uh, ha publicado eh, diversos libros y diversos artículos sobre, sobre el tema, sobre la financiación de partidos y campañas electorales. Eh, uno de sus uh, libros más uh, que ha tenido un mayor impacto es un libro eh, de derecho electoral que ha conocido recientemente de, en este año 2015 su segunda edición um, y el nivel de rigor en el análisis y la finura de su uh, capacidad ¿no? de, de examen de este tipo de problemas uh, es tan uh, relevante que incluso uh, hace muy poco este año ha recibido el premio de la Academia Francesa de Ciencias Políticas y Morales. Así que estamos ante realmente un experto de muchísimo nivel, eh, al que yo he conocido a través de, de Greco, del Grupo de Estados contra la Corrupción. Eh, ha sido uno de los grandes expertos en el tema de la financiación de los partidos. Como ustedes saben, la tercera ronda de evaluación de Greco se dedicó al análisis de dos temas, dos problemas relacionados con la corrupción. Uno que tenía que ver con la manera en la que están tipificados los delitos de corrupción en los distintos países miembros de, de Greco. Y el segundo gran tema era precisamente el de la financiación de los partidos. Bueno, Yves Marie Dublé ha sido eh, uno de los expertos fundamentales tanto en el desarrollo de la metodología para hacer esas evaluaciones de Greco uh, como uh, para participar en muchas de las evaluaciones, entre ellas, por ejemplo, en la propia evaluación del, del caso español. Uh, y María Dublé formó parte del, del equipo de, de evaluación de Greco eh, que hizo el informe sobre España en el año eh, 2000, 2008, 2007-2008, que realmente ha abierto eh, buena parte del debate eh, público en España y ha empujado algunas de las eh, reformas que hemos hecho en los últimos años. Todavía eh, insuficientes, tenemos una muy cercana que realmente sí ha dado un paso más adelante, pero aún así sigue habiendo eh, algunos problemas ¿no? con esto. Hablaremos del, del caso español dentro de, de un momento, dentro a lo largo de la, de la jornada. Pero eh, el, el trabajo de Greco ha sido clave, no solo en nuestro país, sino en muchos otros países, al menos generando un debate público ¿no? sobre el problema de la financiación de los partidos. Y en gran medida el, el trabajo concreto de Marie Dublé ha sido fundamental para este éxito eh, que ha tenido Greco um, a la hora de, de, um, en fin, de incentivar ¿no? ese, ese debate en buena parte de las sociedades de los países europeos. Así que, eh, Marie Dublé, muchísimas gracias eh, por venir, por, por estar aquí con, con nosotros, por aceptar la invitación para estar aquí y estamos eh, deseando escucharle. Thank you. I would express first my gratitude to Professor Fernando Jimenez for organizing this uh, conference. It's always a pleasure to, to be in Barcelona. And in, in his uh, four words of the general report of activity on the Greco uh, last year, uh, the chairman of the Greco considered that political finance has turned out to be the hottest potato that the Greco has ever dealt with. Uh, the Greco has nothing to do with your uh, painter. The Greco is uh, a group of states against uh, corruption. It's a structure, internal structure of the Council of Europe, which has been created in 1999 and which is composed of uh, 49 member states. That means 47 member states of the Council of Europe, plus the Belarus, which looks strange, and the United States. And the purpose of the activity of the GRECO is uh, to monitor uh, the compliance of the member states of the Council of Europe 
of, of the Greco with uh, anti-compliance, um, with anti-corruption uh, standards. And there are uh, several standards. There is a um, criminal uh, law convention and there is a civil law convention. And in the field of uh, political party funding and electoral campaign funding, there is a recommendation of 2003 uh, of the Council of Europe, which uh, defines some guidelines for the member states concerning transparency, concerning uh, monitoring, and uh, concerning uh, uh, sanctions. As it has been already said, the um, uh, evaluation round on party and electoral campaign uh, funding of the member states of the Greco uh, was launched in uh, 2007. And that I think there is just the Belarus which will be uh, evaluated shortly, I think, at the end of the year. The work of the uh, Greco consists of uh, visits on the spot of uh, member states and the method of uh, investigation uh, of the Greco is based on a questionnaire and uh, meetings with officials, with representatives of political parties, uh, with uh, the supervision uh, bodies, with the prosecutors, with NGOs of the host country and its peer review uh, system. And uh, these uh, reports of the Greco lead to recommendations for uh, changing uh, the roles of the member states regarding uh, the rec recommendation of the Council of Europe I just mentioned. There are three key issues. First one, the first one is uh, transparency. The second one is about monitoring of the implementation of uh, the rules on party and electoral campaign uh, funding. And the third one uh, deals uh, with a sanction which may be applied in case of infringements of uh, these rules of uh, transparency and monitoring. Let's start with uh, transparency and with uh, private donations. Uh, for instance, at the beginning of his work, uh, at the beginning of his round, uh, the Greco noted that um, in some member states, anonymous donations were uh, accepted. That was the case for Denmark, for Malta, for the Netherlands, for Bulgaria. A progress has been achieved now in Bulgaria. But uh, there are countries where anonymous donations uh, are banned, but there are ways to circumvent uh, this uh, prohibition because, uh, you know, um, money is like water. It finds always its own way. And that's the case for Greece, for instance, where uh, parties give uh, coupons under 600 uh, euro donations to donors as receipts. And it's uh, practice, this practice allows, of course, anonymous uh, flows of uh, money. There are uh, countries, too, where you have a high uh, declaration threshold, which is an obstacle, which may be considered as an obstacle to transparency. That was the case in Cyprus, in Finland, in Germany, in Ireland, and in the Netherlands. Um, the member states uh, put forward several arguments against this uh, request of the Greco for more uh, transparency. One was the argument of uh, protection of privacy, which was being put forward, for instance, in Belgium. Another argument has been uh, put forward in uh, France that the freedom of public opinion which is a consequence of uh, the secret uh, uh, ballot. What we note is that there are more and more countries which uh, prohibit uh, donations of, uh, from private uh, companies 
You see uh, the list here on the slides. It's Belgium, Bulgaria, Estonia, France, Lithuania, Poland. Perhaps Poland will change in the next uh, future. There is strong uh, pressure to uh, renounce to uh, this uh, system of funding. Portugal, and as far as I know, uh, Spain at the, was the last uh, 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 act. Um, another form of uh, donations uh, which raise problems regarding transparency is in-kind donations, which can be considered in certain cases as uh, donations. That's the case uh, in Latvia or in the United Kingdom for availability of services or equipment to the parties. Uh, in Slovenia, uh, hiring of staff or footing of party invoices by uh, private companies uh, may be uh, applied. Uh, we encounter some problems with the treatment of the commitment of volunteers in the electoral uh, campaigns. And for instance, um, civil servants of um, public of uh, local bodies who support a, a candidate or, the, uh, for instance, the incumbent mayor can uh, take part in the electoral uh, campaign of the candidate. And in France, they must take vacations to uh, commit themselves in the electoral uh, campaign. Another problem is the value which has to be given to the in-kind uh, donations. Uh, uh, Armenia, for instance, in Armenia the value is the market value, but in other countries, such as Hungary, there is no regulations concerning the evaluation which has to be made for these in-kind donations. In Russia, uh, the um, political parties are requested to call an expertise to uh, give uh, value to the uh, in-kind donation of the companies to uh, the political uh, parties. I told you at the beginning that, for instance, Belgium prohibited uh, the donations from uh, private uh, companies to political parties. But at the same time, uh, Belgium admits sponsorship of uh, private companies to political parties and uh, we don't know exactly what is the difference uh, between uh, donation and sponsorship. Uh, sponsorship is a um, practice which applies to in Germany uh, and which is, considered, which is not considered as a donation from a tax uh, uh, legal point of view, but a sponsorship is uh, maybe deductible from uh, advertising expenses of uh, the companies. And so you have uh, some breweries in Bavaria who uh, make a sponsorship for congresses of the Christian social uh, parties there. Um, another problem I want to raise, which is rather delicate, is the link between um, uh, donation from private companies and public uh, procurements. When I evaluated uh, Spain, we, our attention was drawn by the fact there was no possibility for private companies to make donations during the public procurement. But there was a loophole for the time before the public procurement and for the time after uh, the public uh, procurement. I don't know. Uh, if the last uh, act uh, on uh, the economic activities on the political party in Spain changed these, uh, changed these uh, roles, I, as far as I know, in Spain now there is a ban on donations uh, from physical persons uh, with engagement uh, in a contract. But I don't think it's the main problem. The main problem is the commitment of the financial commitments of a legal uh, persons deal with, dealing with uh, public uh, procurements. Uh, now we move to loans. I know that it's a very important problem in 
in Spain, and so the same uh, too in uh, Poland, because alone uh, may be a way to circumvent uh, the sailing uh, on donations. Um, in the UK, uh, loans must be declared to uh, the Electoral uh, Commission. The same applies, same rules applies for candidates and for uh, third parties which are involved in the electoral uh, campaign. But uh, very often we note a lack of details on the loans, on these loans of the uh, political parties uh, concerning, for instance, their length, concerning their interest uh, rate which uh, applies. I know that progress has been achieved in this field in Spain in 2002 and uh, that I know that the debt cancellation uh, now uh, is banned uh, in, in Spain. Some progress has been achieved too uh, in uh, uh, Poland. Third parties. Uh, if you have a sailing of uh, electoral expenses for uh, political uh, parties, but if you don't have any sailing for electoral expenses of uh, third parties, the selling of electoral expenses for uh, political parties won't, but will, will not reach uh, his uh, uh, target. And it's, it will be easy to circumvent uh, this uh, selling. Uh, with the involvement of third uh, parties. And we know that more and more uh, third parties such as interest groups, uh, think tanks, associations, trade unions, interfere now with uh, electoral uh, campaigns. And I'd like to mention uh, in, in that field the British example, which is a good uh, practice, because the third parties in uh, uh, Great Britain have to declare um, their expenses to the Electoral uh, Commission. They have to declare uh, their uh, donation and there is a sailing for uh, these uh, third uh, uh, parties uh, in the uh, United uh, uh, Kingdom. Uh, in terms of uh, transparency, um, accounts report is is another field of uh, interest. First problem uh, deals with uh, account keeping. And uh, I think the political parties have to appoint a, a person in charge of uh, keeping these accounts. That's, for instance, the treasurer uh, in the United uh, Kingdom. But very often the Greco notes that there was not standard uh, accounts, uh, so it was difficult to make comparison in time and in space between the political uh, parties. That was the case for Ireland, for the Netherlands, for Norway before the change which uh, occurred, for Turkey, for uh, the UK, and uh, as far as I know, the Court of Audit in Spain now uh, uh, established a common standard for uh, political uh, uh, parties. And concerning the scope of accounts, uh, another problem is the lack of information of, uh, about accounts of uh, structure which are in the environment of uh, political uh, parties. Uh, progress has been, has been achieved in uh, Estonia, in, way, in Norway, but as far as I know, uh, corporate donation must be uh, channeled through related entities to political parties still uh, in Spain. And very often we don't have any information about uh, accounts of local party structures that was the case of uh, the Ireland and the Netherlands. And uh, Lithuania, on the contrary, um, is a counterexample because um, now uh, information of branches of political parties, local level, are uh, included in the financial statements of the national uh, political uh, parties. Party foundations 
are, uh, it's another problem because they are not always in the scope of activity of course of the, of the political uh, parties. And last but ne- least, there is a matter of disclosure of the uh, account. In some cases, you don't have any obligation of disclosure. It was uh, the case for Belgium, for Malta, for uh, Poland. And on the UK, it works on a voluntary basis of the political uh, party. As model, I'd like uh, to uh, mention the, the disclosure of the services and donations of the third parties in the UK I uh, just mentioned. Uh, concerning uh, monitoring, <coughs> of the implementation of the different uh, rules which may be applied, there are uh, two main concerns. The first uh, one is related with the status of uh, the monitoring uh, body which interfere with these uh, questions. And then there is uh, the question of the fragmentation of uh, the monitoring uh, bodies. At the first level, uh, you have, in many cases, a sort of a certified accountant or an auditor, whatever, which uh, certifies the accounts of the political uh, parties. But in uh, some countries, these certified, these charter accountants may be members of the political parties. And, or in very small uh, countries where ju- you have just a few uh, chartered accountants, Chartered accountants of uh, a political party, maybe chartered accountants, uh, chartered accountant of uh, a company who makes donation to the political uh, parties, which is a, a problem. But uh, in some countries, again, like Iceland, who have, uh, I don't know, between 2,000 and 300,000 uh, inhabitants, you have just uh, a few uh, chartered accountants which are able to. To, uh, to certify uh, account and accounts. Um, on the second level, uh, you have a public um, monitoring uh, body. Uh, you have few uh, countries where uh, these uh, bodies are in really independent, such as Estonia, such as France, such as Norway, and I want to know what is the experience, the Norwegian experience, because in Norway now you have um, a committee which is composed uh, by um, auditing professionals. One, uh, this monitoring body is a political uh, one. Either it is in the hands of the parliament or it is in the hands of the um, executive. And uh, the Greco uh, expressed uh, his uh, concern with the possible uh, um, partisanship, of course, within uh, these uh, political uh, uh, bodies. Another problem is the, uh, the fragmentation of the monitoring body. In certain cases, you have a relevant single uh, monitoring body, that's the case in France, in Finland, in Germany, in Norway, in the UK with the Electoral <coughs> Commission. In other countries, this monitoring is split between uh, several bodies, uh, Electoral Commission, um, a Court of Audit, uh, or um, uh, whatever, which is uh, not very... Uh, well in terms of uh, efficiency. Uh, But monitoring uh, is not in itself a guarantee of uh, effectiveness and uh, concerning the content of uh, monitoring, what we uh, observe uh, in the Greco, that very frequently uh, the monitoring bodies don't carry out any uh, monitoring beyond the data which are provided by the political parties or which are provided by uh, the uh, candidate. Uh, The scope of uh, the monitoring may vary from a country to another or from an election to another one. 
For instance, there is no monitoring on electoral accounts of candidates in Belgium. There was no monitoring on funding of presidential elections in Iceland, for instance. But uh, Iceland amended its uh, role after the evaluation of the uh, Grey Code. And then there is, of course, the problem of the means of the monitoring uh, bodies. Generally, they have, these monitoring bodies have insufficient um, funds and staff uh, to perform the uh, duties. Uh, in the Bundestag uh, administration, which is the monitoring uh, body, which is relevant to monitor the uh, funds of the political parties. Germany's are just uh, eight persons, and uh, the lack of staff, as you say, as you see, has been noted in many, many uh, uh, countries. Uh, I read that um, now uh, over 40 per 40 per 40 persons are dedicated to uh, this job in Spain, in the Tribunal uh, uh, das Cuentas. But this um, lack of uh, staff has uh, two impacts. The first one is a political uh, one. For instance, uh, in Spain, uh, the monitoring on the financial years of uh, 2009 to 2011 were um, released just 2014. So um, the comments are on data concerning uh, accounting years three years uh, uh, later have a little impact in the public opinion. And then from a legal point of view, uh, you must connect this issue with the limitation regime which applies. Um, if uh, the, uh, the financial report, the financial statement released after uh, the limitation, of course the, the financial statements will uh, not be very uh, deterrent. Uh, what about uh, sanctions? I remind you that according to the recommendation of 2003 of the Council of uh, Europe, uh, sanctions which may uh, be applied must be uh, effective, proportionate and uh, dissuasive. And we noted that in several cases there are no sanctions uh, were provided by um, domestic regulations that's the case uh, for Albania uh, before um, the evaluations of, uh, by the Greco of Malta. In certain cases, sanctions um, are uh, rather weak. That's the case for uh, Belgium, for, in for instance. We, the sanctions consist of a loss of uh, public funds for four months for the parties which infringe the law. As I don't think it's a very huge problem to get a loan for this, uh, for this party during uh, four months. In France, uh, through a loophole in the law, uh, fines uh, apply just to um, recipients, but not to donors. And uh, in Slovenia, we observe, for instance, that the fines may be lower, might be lower than the false uh, donations which could be uh, made. You have uh, cases where uh, very strict sanctions, um, such as uh, criminal sanctions, may uh, apply. Uh, we have cases where just administrative uh, fines may uh, be uh, applied. I, as far as I know, uh, according to the recent changes in Spain, you introduce uh, incremental fines to make the fines more uh, flexible, which uh, corresponds to the recommendation of uh, the uh, Greco. But uh, it's not just a problem of definition of, of, of sky of, uh, um, of um, sanctions. We noted that in certain cases, not all uh, infringements of the rules were liable uh, to uh, uh, sanctions. And in many cases, 
sanctions which exist in the paper are not imposed in practice. That way is the case in Belgium, Estonia, Finland, France, Slovakia, and uh, the United uh, Kingdom. What conclusions can be drawn now from this experience of uh, the work of uh, the Greco? Regarding, uh, to, uh, regarding the recommendation of the Council of Europe, oh, there are many uh, loopholes in the rules uh, of the member states. There are uh, some success stories. Uh, member states have uh, amended the rules of their, their evaluations uh, of the Greco. We don't know if, the, if it is the influence of the Greco or it is, if it is the influence of uh, uh, scandals, in fact. Uh, but uh, that's the case for uh, some Balkan, uh, Bal countries from the, Balkan, uh, from the Balkans, uh, the countries from uh, Scandinavia, I remind you uh, the compliance uh, procedure which uh, applies. Um, after uh, 18 months, the Greco uh, assesses uh, the implementation of the recommendation uh, he made and whether it has been uh, implemented uh, satisfactorily or partly or it has not been uh, uh, implemented at all. And if uh, not all recommendations have been complied with. There is a new period of 18 months which is opened to the member state. When you have a graduate approach for steps which can be made and which for the countries which did not comply with the recommendation. The last step is a letter from the Secretary General of the Council of Europe to the Minister of the Foreign Affairs of the Member State. It was the case, for instance, with Belgium. And either the procedure will be terminated with, um, by an official declaration of non-compliance or by a declaration of compliance uh, of, uh, if all recommendations have been uh, implemented, that there was the case, for instance, uh, of uh, Lithuania. Uh, what is the breakdown of this uh, recommendation from a statistic point of view? 37% uh, of the recommendations have been implemented satisfactorily. 9% have been dealt in a satisfactory manner. That means uh, with under ways, under means, that's uh, the ways uh, which uh, were recommended by uh, the Greco. And 29% have been partly implemented and 25% have not been implemented. But, you know, a party and electoral um, campaign funding are uh, areas which are beyond the direct, the direct uh, government control and beyond the direct uh, uh, control of uh, parliament and the influence of the political uh, parties. What is uh, remarkable is that uh, I would say that all democracies, in fact, are more reluct reluctant to implement these recommendations. That's the case, for instance, of the UK, that's the case of Rome, for France. But uh, young democracy, for instance, the Balkan countries, which uh, want to meet European standards, change uh, their rules and implement their uh, recommendations uh, uh, of uh, the uh, Greco. Uh, anyway, uh, I think I told you there are two main problems in uh, this field of uh, political uh, funding. Uh, transparency, monitoring, and um, uh, sanctions. And these three issues can't be treated separately. They are closely interconnected. No sanctions may be imposed without any efficient monitoring body, and no efficient monitoring may be carried out without transparency. Thank you for your attention. Muchas gracias, señor Dublé.
Quizá tenemos eh, cinco o diez minutos para alguna pregunta. No estaba previsto, pero como vamos, hemos recuperado el tiempo, ¿no? Que si uh, hay alguna pregunta concreta para el señor Dublé, si no hacemos el, la pausa de café ahora. ¿Alguna pregunta? No. To number the the ballot number two, I think, is the member states that have amended. I think we should include Croatia because they have done a lot on uh, on this. Thank you. I did not uh, mention all the countries, just <laughs> gave a sample of uh, countries because it's, uh, that's a lot of countries. Una pregunta más o aquí. Yes, uh, I'd like to know if the Greco has a, a position uh, regarding to the question of the prohibition or not of donations from uh, legal persons, uh, and and why um, uh, is the Greco um, for this kind of prohibition, which was, as you said, uh, recently implemented in Spanish legislation, or um, does the Greco give um, uh, full freedom for different countries to adopt this prohibition or not, and why? Thanks. Um, no, <laughs> they have an ambiguous, um, you, you, as, you, as you know, there are, um, this problem is, uh, uh, is regulated under different manners. You have, uh, I would say, the majority of the countries, of the member states, of the, the majority of the member states of the Greco, uh, uh, donations from companies are um, admitted. Um, but uh, if I refer to the recommendation of uh, to 2003, perhaps it's a little uh, uh, ambiguous. Uh, the provisions, uh, Article 2 provides for the donation means any deliberate uh, act to bestow advantage economic or otherwise on a political uh, uh, parties. Uh, of course, uh, when a company makes a donation, we, you know that a uh, company is not, uh, does not make that for philanthropic uh, purposes. And um, you, have in this, you have the same uh, provision in um, in Germany, which is strange but amusing. Um, um, in the Parteiengesetz, that the, um, the, the act on the political parties uh, in Germany, I think it's at uh, the beginning of, the, of this uh, provision concerning uh, party funding, it says uh, donations must not be made in return for a recognizable advantage. And at the same time, uh, uh, companies are allowed to uh, make uh, uh, donations. And you have a huge donation from Daimler brands or uh, car company, other car companies, but the Germans are clever enough to split the donations and the same level between both major political parties. Um, la última pregunta, quizá, si no la lanzo yo. Um, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo valoraría el señor Dublé uh, la eficacia de Greco en esta tercera ronda? Quiero decir, si uno compara el éxito de las recomendaciones como hemos visto en estos datos no, no la hemos comparado con el resto de rondas de evaluación de Greco pero eh, son considerablemente más bajos eh, ¿no? es decir, la, el, cómo los eh, países eh, han tenido en cuenta esas recomendaciones ha habido una repercusión mucho más baja en el caso de la financiación de los partidos que en anteriores rondas de, uh, de evaluación de, de Greco o sea que ha habido otros aspectos de la lucha contra la corrupción donde los países han reaccionado de manera un poco más eficaz. 
¿Qué, qué, ¿Qué conclusión podemos sacar sobre eso? Digo, se refería usted a, a la idea de que, bueno, al final es un tema que también incumbe a los partidos, no es solo los gobiernos, no es solo ni siquiera los parlamentos, sino que los partidos tienen que hacer algo y por eso es más difícil para los países cumplir con las recomendaciones de Greco. Pero en línea general, el, el, ¿con qué sensación se queda uno? ¿Es positivo después de todo el trabajo de Greco? A, 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 mejorado los sistemas de eh, control, de transparencia en la financiación de los partidos y las elecciones? ¿Cuál es su sensación sobre eso? Yes, there are two ways to change the roles in political funding. Uh, that are the internal change after, generally after scandals, that uh, the political power decides very quickly to change uh, the roles. And it's not always very uh, efficient because uh, it's, very, uh, it's an emotional reaction. And there is this uh, international uh, change due to the Greek uh, Very roughly, you see that half of the, of the recommendations have been implemented and half, the other half haven't, hasn't been implemented. Uh, yes, as I told you, uh, there, are, there are some success stories in the north of Europe, in the Balkan countries, and uh, things are uh, go slower uh, uh, in other countries. If you take the example of Spain, how do you explain the changes which has been decided in Spain? Uh, in 2012 and 2014 and 15. Is it the influence of the Greco or is this due to uh, internal, internal uh, domestic or uh, political reasons? Sí, probablemente una combinación mm -hmm. de una combinación. Factores, ¿no? mm -hmm. Hablaremos del caso español más detenidamente un poco más adelante en el, en el curso. Uh, sí. Hey, professor, my question is about the, the last uh, point about conclusions. Uh, what do you think about uh, the possibility to improve this percentage of, uh, that, uh, that at the moment is not solved? Uh, because uh, Europe is, uh, is a unit goal and the transference of activities about uh, uh, companies, about uh, donation, many times it's a problem for uh, different activities like in Spain or in other uh, countries. Uh, it's important, the transference, because uh, Europe, many companies are implemented, the lobbies are important, they are implemented in a country, they are doing something in a country but transferred to another. This is a problem that we are living at the moment, because I represent a, a business association that is a small country, a small companies in Spain, that is PIMEC. Uh, our problem is about uh, the big lobbies in another countries that are implemented activities that are not uh, forbidden in a country and then transfer to another. This is, for, this, for, for, this moment, for this question, we are more interested uh, in your activities. Thanks. Yes, uh, there are uh, common rules uh, concerning companies uh, on the European level, such as, uh, for instance, um, good governance. It's uh, in, uh, is regulated by a directive. Uh, trade uh, are more, uh, matters are more, and more uh, competitions matters are more and more regulated by uh, the European Union. But on the other side, uh, uh, electoral law remains the competence of uh, each uh, can member state. So uh, each member state is uh, competent to regulate these. Um, these uh, matters which are part of its are part of their own uh, sovereignty mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a problem mm -hmm. bueno pues si les parece bien vamos a tomar un café un descanso y empezamos a las once y media reanudamos el curso muchísimas gracias señor Dublé